Hi guys and welcome to the channel. In this video tutorial I'm going to show you how to create a Gmail account so that you can send and receive emails. So it won't take too long so if you've got a cup of coffee in your hand, maybe a cup of tea, I promise it'll still be warm by the time we get finished here. So let's go ahead and get started by going to your web browser of choice. By default Windows wants us to use Microsoft Edge that comes pre-installed on Windows 10 and 11. But for the purposes of this tutorial, I'm going to be using Google Chrome. Just because we're making a Gmail account and Gmail is owned by Google, they have some nifty features that the browser Google Chrome has that Edge does not. So let's go ahead and open up Google here. And there are a couple different ways that you can get to Gmail. The first is by going to the search bar up the top here and typing in gmail.com. And that will bring us to the account sign in and creation page. Now there is another way that we can get there. So if we close this tab here, in the top right hand corner, we can see a little hyperlink here, which takes us to that same page. And here we can sign in or we can create a new account, which we will do right now. So if you click on this button in the bottom left here, it will give you three options. The first one is personal use for my child or for work or business. I am not a business, I am not a child, and I'm gonna be using this for personal use. So let's go ahead and click that. Cool, so let's go ahead and pop in our details here. My, my first name is Brenton, my surname is Hancock. Your details may be different than mine. And we'll capitalize that. Perfect, and for demonstration purposes, my birthday is January 1st, 1990. It is not, because I prefer to be secure. So, once we've popped in our details, we can see that we've got a couple of random email addresses that Google has made for us. And you can select one of these and you can use it or you can create your own Gmail address, which I'm gonna do here because I don't like the look of either of these here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to the memory banks of my mind. and I'm gonna pull out something from my old MSN days. Let's go ahead and do little X, big X. <laughs> big X, little X. Let's see if this is actually a valid email address. I know that Brenton Hancock at gmail.com is not available through no fault of my own. I did not actually pick that one up. That is not mine. So let's go ahead and say, oh, that is actually a valid email address that I can use. Perfect. So we can go ahead and pop in a password here, super secure, something that you're going to remember. Password does not match. Perfect, that works there. So what we're gonna see on the next screen here is add a recovery email. So there might be instances where your account gets locked out or maybe you've just forgotten your super secure password. As you can see what I just did there, I have very heavy fingers and I mistyped a few things. And maybe you need to get back into your account and you can't access it. What this allows Google to do is to send an email with a recovery code to another email address. Say it could be another email address that you've got, or it could be a relative's email address. What this does, it allows you to get back into your account should you ever be locked out for any reason. So I don't actually need this, but you can pop in a recovery email and it is suggested that you do so. So I'm gonna skip this just for now, just for tutorial purposes. And it's the same thing here with a phone number. So you can pop a phone number in and it's say you don't have a recovery email address or you don't want to use a recovery email address. You can use a phone number and then a recovery code is sent to your phone instead of sent to an email. And it's the same thing as before. And we'll skip this here as well. And we can see my brand new email address is right here and ready to be used as long as I hit next. 
So we can go ahead and read Google's privacy and terms. And of course I've read and agree to everything here. And one of the cool features about Google is if you were keen eyed, you would have seen something change up in the top right hand corner. I was now signed in to the web browser. So now I am signed in as Brenton Hancock with XX Brenton Hancock XX at gmail.com on this browser. And what that allows me to do is to sign into Google Chrome on any device and my information is carried across. So any stored passwords, any Google searches that I've made, any bookmarks that I might have, let's say I want to bookmark Google Chrome, I've bookmarked it there, it goes in the bookmarks bar. If I sign into Google Chrome on another device that allows me to pick up my bookmarks, it allows me to pick up my saved email addresses, all because I made a Gmail account, which also makes a Google account. And that is just very nifty. And that's really it for today. If you enjoyed the video, you can go ahead and give it a like. If this helped you out, go ahead and give it a comment down below and tell me how it helped you out. If there's any issues, please also let me know. I'll see you next time.